Welcome to the new digital age. With an abundance of new and ever-changing technologies have come inevitable social and cultural changes. Here at the University of Virginia, the student use of these new technologies has greatly changed the nature of group organization. In particular, Facebook and email have become deeply integrated into the daily routines of university students. In his article, What is Web 2.0?, Tim O'Reilly explained how social networking sites such as Facebook have a built-in architecture of participation that facilitates the connection of community members to one another. Student groups often use email to send out mass emails to publicize groups of events. Although email has been around for longer than Facebook, it has also evolved to fit the needs of group organization. Commonly used listservs let one send mass emails to subscribers to the group. Students vary widely in which forms of communication they use and how often they use it. The Facebook event is probably like the best thing Facebook has to offer because it, it allows something that was so hard to do and it was just like word of mouth to get around when it comes to invitation and it just puts it so clearly and everybody has access to it and it, also if you're the person making the event it's easier and it's more organized for you. For Facebook we don't use it at all and um, need it for polls. Um, and really I like face-to-face -face stuff so I don't communicate much that way at all. Um, given the chance, I'd much rather, you know, meet him on the road and say, hey, let's talk about this. Email for the more, like, school and formal things, the informal things Facebook. With new technologies, inevitably comes an advent of a fresh set of issues for society to grapple with. Are we too impatient and distracted now to actually partake in collective group action? Do online groups and mass emails promote apathy and laziness and nominal rather than actual participation? Have we lost that personal touch and thus actually become more disconnected by communicating through the medium of a computer? Firstly, how has Facebook and email changed our lives, for better or for worse? Well, I think society as a whole has definitely become more impatient because our internet's all high-speed internet now, we have broadband, and we expect this instant reply from everyone we communicate with, and so we become very impatient, and we want that instant gratification. I think it definitely helps a lot. We've kept in touch with girls that have already graduated um, much easier through the online communication, because I don't even have their phone numbers, and I wouldn't even know how to contact them, but this way, you can, like, you know, on Facebook, you can just, you know, write on their wall and be like, hey, how's it going, what are you up to? On one hand, it's an advantage because we've become very efficient, and we're able to multitask and do more things with our time, but on the other hand, we've definitely lost that personal touch during our communication, so that's bad. It is also questionable whether these technologies have actually made any true impact on the efficiency and effectiveness of group organization. Absolutely. Um, you just have so much more of a network of friends um, and friends of friends that you might not know, that you might get to know through uh, where you live or where they live. Or... More involved? Uh, probably not. It makes it easier for me and probably makes me more efficient when it comes to making announcements. I'm not sure that it actually enhances the communication between the players and myself. Yes, because um, in the in-between times between meetings, um, it does help to have a form of communication that's, that everyone can participate in without actually having to you know, be face-to-face -face in a room together. Facebook is a social networking website created in 2004 that allows users to sign up and create personal profiles for themselves. Among the many applications available on Facebook, there includes an application entitled Groups. Group organizers may use this application to create an online group in which they can invite friends and others who may be interested. Users and group organizations may also use the Events application to increase publicity for a certain event, such as a party or rally. Their attendance status is thus shown on the events profile page, letting others know how many people will be at a certain event. 
Some students note the prevalence of pseudo-membership in the new age in which students may be members of an online group, but that is the extent of their participation. I believe there's a Facebook group, Catholic Student Ministry, and it's like almost 300, 400 people, but on a weekly basis you can say anywhere between 40 and 60 people actually show up. Um, within those people, I'm close or I talk to or I'm acquainted with like a good 30, 35, 35 people of them, maybe even more. Um, so yeah, there are like, I feel like it's so easy to, with technology, to just kind of be part of a group. Um, especially with the spirit list I was talking about before, like people will send out information on there and you don't even know who they are. And sometimes they're like asking for rides or something and they're just like taking advantage of like mass emailing through a group. I think it's kind of a double-edged sword side, kind of. Um, Facebook's really helped a lot of my groups organize, but the problem also is with Facebook that a lot of people do say that they're coming to events or they, you know, it, it creates a lot of good publicity, but a lot of people also don't end up coming to events that they say they do, which is really bad for when you need to count for how many people are going to be there. Like I said, our main mode of communication is through email. Email is not particularly effective in keeping people involved, especially in a big group when there's lots of members. Um, also, but I do feel like Facebook events are very effective. It's a good way to advertise, and you're able to see who has um, selected that they will be attending that event and who else is going to be there. So when you see that your friends are going to be there, you want to join too. So it's very good at bandwagoning people into involvement. As with any change, there is inevitably something lost. What is lost with the advent of Facebook and mass emails? I think that there's, there needs to always be a personal touch. I mean, what's the point of joining a group? But when it comes to emailing and even Facebook, it's just a question of uh, efficiency. I mean, you can't get to everybody all the time just by going face to face. Or even phone calling is just not reasonable. Um, and a lot of times people will go to certain events and not to others. So it's like, how will you be able to reach all of them? And like, therein lies the spiritless, you know, uh, function. So I, I don't think it's a problem. I think like groups should really focus on making it personal and like making it friendly. Well, I think it, to some extent it's impersonal. Um, it, it slows down the, the give and take. Some things are lost in translation in translation when they're kind of you know put down on the written in the written word. Um, as somebody who works with um, individuals with people, uh, basically in a service profession. Um, a lot of what uh, of what I do, um, you know, relies in body language and tone of voice and inflection, and those things, you know, sometimes get lost. Students stress the combination of the new and old when addressing the best form of group organization and communication. I don't think we'll ever really lose um, FaceTime. It's it's kind of like when. I don't know, when I think of telephones. Because, you know, you're not actually talking face-to-face -face with someone, you're talking with them over the phone, but that hasn't stopped face-to-face -face conversations either. That face-to-face -face communication and recruitment is very important because when people actually see you in person and see that you're interested in them and having them join you, it's much more effective and you're much more able to show your excitement and your enthusiasm through face-to-face -face communication. Um, I think we've grown to incorporate a new medium and new methods of communication, which is good, um, although we can't heavily rely on them because, you know, Facebook will go down. And there are some people like me who don't use Facebook very much at all. In an age of ever-changing technology, students at the University of Virginia attempt to find ways to use these modes of communication to their greatest advantage, while still maintaining the personal touch of human contact. As technology continues to evolve, only time will tell which societal changes are permanent and which are transient. Goodbye.